Satisfied to do the church. I walk away. I'm not satisfied. There's no love in my life but you. I will believe in you. We believe in the power of your word, and it's true. We believe in you. So we laid on our cause so that our cause might be found in you. I'm not satisfied when in yesterday's heart. I'm not satisfied to have the form. But not the power, I'm not satisfied. Lord, I am crucified with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We believe in you. We Come on, play on those string instruments. Quiet. 
with you. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I'm not the power, I'm not satisfied. Lord, I am crucified with you. We his name for he's worthy of the praise the honor the glory he's worthy to be praised he's worthy to be honored he's worthy to be glorified hallelujah oh blessed be the name of God hallelujah we bless the name of God and praise his name we glorify him and magnify him we lift him up oh God and praise him for he's God Hallelujah, we bless him and praise his name for he is the almighty God. He's a prince of peace. Hallelujah, praise God. He's a rock of ages. My God, he's a scepter. He's our door. He's our high priest and our king. He's our good shepherd and our true vine. Hallelujah, glory to God. He's the bread of life. He's the way, the truth, and the light. He's the light of the world. He's our resurrection and our life. He's faithful and true. He's the first begotten from the dead. And so this morning we gather to praise him and to glorify him. Somebody open your mouth and give God praise for he's worthy. Give him the glory for he's worthy. He's great and mighty God. There is no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. Praise God for he sit up high and look down low. He has made our enemies our footstool. He has given us liberty in him. For in him we live and move and have our being. And so we bless him and praise him and glorify him. We magnify him. We lift him up. Oh God, there is none greater than God Almighty. Oh, blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Oh, blessed be the name of God. Oh, praise God. We bow our heads today. For there is no God but Jehovah God. There is none greater and none mightier. We honor him for he is God. He's our healer, our mind regulator. He's our keeper and our friend. And so we bow our heads this morning just thanking you. Thanking you for another day, another opportunity, another time in season. Because while we were yet sinner, God, you died for us. And so we thank you for salvation, so rich and so free. We thank you for the multitude of blessings. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And so today, God, we pray for those that are under the hearing of my voice. I pray, God, that you would, oh God, move in the midst. Remove this lump of clay that you might be glorified. Use me according to your glory and according, oh God, to the unction of the Holy Ghost. Let me not be seen or heard, but God, let my preaching uh, be a demonstration of the Spirit of God. Uh, bless this congregation, these great people, those that might be listening. Oh, God, bless them right now. Oh, God, heal and deliver, heal and set free. And, Father, we won't fail to give you the honor and the glory. Oh, God, we won't fail to praise you because truly it's thine. Somebody say amen in this house. Come on and say amen again. We bless God in this house. Grab your Bibles with me. Amen. Praise God. As we will try to look at marriage does work. Part two. Amen. Praise God. First Peter three. Starting from the first verse. Amen. Giving honor to God who is my life. Amen. In him. I live and move and have my being. I'm hopeless without him. Amen. Everything about me is about him. And I thank God that he chose me. I thank God for my husband. 28 years. Amen. Praise God. I thank God for 28 years of friendship. Amen. It had gotten tough sometimes, but amen. It's a part of the marriage. Amen. Praise God. It gets tough sometimes. But God, if you could just stay in it after a while, amen, you'll reap the benefit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I thank God. Amen. For the minister in charge. Amen. Elder Dawson and you, Pastor Dawson, all the evangelists and ministers. Amen. The chairman of the deacon board in his absent and the chairwoman of the deaconess board and all the auxiliary leaders and God's wonderful people. Amen. I greet you all, our musicians, trustees and everyone. Amen. Our guests, if there's any. Amen. We greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Before we read, amen, I see they took it down, amen. All right. Therefore, I'll give the most earnest heed to the things which I've heard, lest at any time I should let them slip, Hebrew 2 and 1, amen. And so we'll continue to read, um, we'll th this morning read from 1 Peter 3, amen. It says, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that... If any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wife, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting of the hair and the wearing of gold or the putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even as the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is, the, is in the sight of God of great price. For after this matter, manner in the old times, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Who? Oh, I'm sweating now. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughter we are. 
as long as we do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to the knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heir together of the grace of life, that your prayer be not hindered. If it's that way in your Bible, say amen. amen. You may have your seat in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let me just see if I can do a quick recap, and you can help me. Amen. Of last week, for those who did not hear or is not abreast of where we are, amen. Praise God. We are, again, in our family month, and during the family month, we take time, amen, to address the family. Amen. Last week, we looked at the fact that God created man and saw man's need, which was the fact that he was lonely. And God made the man, amen, a helpmeet, amen. He made the woman for the man, amen. We understand also that God does not condone divorce last week, amen. But we were told that through the word of God that Moses gave the people a bill of writing as Jesus spoke, amen, in Matthew 19. He spoke to those uh, religious leaders who tried to trick him, amen. He let them know that it was not so from the beginning. And he said that who God has put together, let no man put asunder. So divorce is not a part of what God, amen, has prescribed. But we understand as the years go by through, through amen, praise God, the hardness of the heart, Amen. Divorce was introduced through Moses. Uh, and then we found out, amen, of course it has become, amen, an hierarchy in the land that we live in. And now, worst of all, it has become a part of the church uh, where people are divorcing for no reason at all. We also looked at the fact that man, after the fall, amen, Receive full authority. It was different before the fall. We did not get such a com command. We understood that after the fall that um, God spoke to the woman. And he told her that she would have great pain in childbirth. And also, amen, her desires would be to her husband. And that he would have the leadership role over her. Or if you want to put it that way, eh, also the rule, he will have the rule over her. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then we moved into the book of Ephesians. And in the book of Ephesians, amen, six, amen, praise God, five, amen, we looked at the submission portion, understanding that we should submit not only one, amen, but one party, but it is one to another, meaning even though we don't like to hear that husbands submit, the Bible does say that the husband should submit to the wife as well as the wife should submit to her husband. The Bible also told the wife that she should reverence and honor her husband. Amen. Praise God. And so, amen. Praise God. The, we also watched last week. We noticed that the, the husband should love his wife unconditionally. Amen. Praise God. Should love his wife as, amen, his own body. Is somebody in the house yet? Amen. And then we understand that the example and the portion of understanding how the husband to love the wife came from, amen, was typified by how Christ loved his church. Amen. And gave himself for the church. Amen. And that he is the head of the church. And so is the husband the head of the wife. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody give God a praise in the house. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how we look at it, but amen. One of the things that I understood last week from the teaching, amen, was that if I, amen, or wives would submit, amen, reverence and honor, and if the husband would love, amen, not one waiting for the other, but amen, but it will be done simultaneously. It will be done together, amen. Not one watching to see if you love me or not. But amen, express love freely one towards another. Amen, not reserving oneself and staying there to observe like an eye spy. I'm going to spy you out before I can show you how I love you. Is there somebody here yet? Amen. Sometimes we wait too long to express the emotions and the feelings. But it's kind of 
give yourself unselfishly one towards another, loving each other, amen, doing all things, amen, according to the word of God. Somebody not hearing me. He might not show you that he loves you, but love him anyhow. She might not show you that she loves you, but love her anyhow. But it's a matter of fact of giving of love one to another, amen, as Christ has given his love to the church, amen, and so are we called to love one another. But too many of us, praise God, it is too conditional. Amen. It, it depends on how you feel. It depends on what you do that I will cook dinner tonight. It depends on how you do that I will prepare clothes today. Or I will go to work and give you my money. But my God, if you only learn to love one another. If we only learn to care for each other. Amen. It would be your money and my money. Your side of the house and my side of the house. But it would be a mutual understanding that we are in this together. It is a oneness. You're a part of me and I'm part of you. And when you put the two together, the mat says it's one. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Hallelujah. So the two has become one. Amen. Even though we have singular bodies, we are still one, both spirit and mind. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so also, we also looked at the selection of mates, amen. Some people might not have loved me at that moment, but we looked at the selection of mates based on the word of God. Although we at times cannot comprehend the complicity of God and how he has put things out and how he lays it out. There is, amen, a road map, amen, praise God, in everything that we ought to do. And so even if you're a single man or a single woman and you seek, amen, in the body of Christ, amen, to select a husband or a wife, amen, God has put out, amen, a way in which to do it. Amen. It's not by the lustful act. It is not through marriage for green card. It's not through marriage, amen, praise God, hallelujah, under your own understanding. But it's selecting a mate under the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost. Woo! Somebody not hearing me. But selecting a mate, you can't go wrong if God says. You can't go wrong if God told you so. Amen. Praise God. And one of the things that we didn't touch, but I just want to touch it really quick. Amen. Praise God. Was that amen. We, we looked at everything. We looked at amen. Praise God. Uh, Eliezer going and getting, amen, Rebecca for Isaac. We looked, amen, praise God, at Jacob, amen, getting his wife, amen, praise God. And we looked, amen, praise God, even at Ammon and, and how Ammon behaved when he could have done differently. But one of the things we didn't look at it was the fact that Naomi... Amen. Praise God in the book of Ruth. Amen. Under the guidance of her mother-in-law, she was, amen, led to Boaz. The man might have been older than her, but she obeyed every step. She took the direction. She took the instructions. And because of that, she prospered. Is somebody with me? So selecting a mate can be done through the power and the anointing of God to prayerfully seek God and prayerfully ask the mind of God. Amen. Not the mind of the flesh and what tickles the flesh but what God is saying concerning this person oh praise God hallelujah and so now we are at the book of Peter amen Peter 1 amen amen as we read amen hallelujah Peter is an apostle of Jesus Christ and Peter amen spoke during the entire time that Jesus walked on the earth, he spoke with authority. Amen. Although he was a man of many words. Amen. The thing is, Peter wrote only two short epistles. He was the one that you would think would have written the entire New Testament. But the new uniqueness of Peter, Peter wrote one epistle. One thing we are clear about Peter, amen, when we are not so clear about Paul, the Apostle Paul, is that it said that he might not have been married or if he was married, his wife died. But one thing without even suspecting or wondering uh, when it comes to Peter was that Peter was married. We know without a doubt that Peter had a wife. Is somebody here yet? 
Amen. Praise God. And so Peter took the liberty to address the wives. Amen. Praise God. So this is a man that had been in a marriage for a season. We know that he was a fisherman by nature and he wanted to take care of his family. That after even when Jesus died, amen, that Peter went fishing again. So we know that Peter was a husband indeed. Amen. Praise God. Peter's wife was once sick. Amen. But we know that Peter knew, maybe more so, knew what he was saying. Not only that he lived the life, but he also had the Spirit of God to guide him. So now he opens up and he's talking again to wives. And I'm not trying to beat up on any wife today because I am one. Amen. So even though we are not, amen, he talked about the fact that wives can have unsaved husbands. Is there anybody here yet? But it doesn't excuse us from, amen, the first clause. The first clause which says that if you're a wife, you ought to be submissive. Whether the husband is saved or not. Somebody says it's easy for you to say that, pastor, because you don't know who I'm living with. But I have to stay with the word of God. And the word of God says, wives, if you're married and even if your husband is unsaved, it is your right duty to be submissive to your unsaved husband. Is there somebody here yet? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you're without, you're without excuse. Amen. Praise God. Your husband deserve your submission. Whether saved or unsaved. Woo. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. Because we get so technical because we have, or we decree and declare we have the mind of God. And if we have the mind of God, the mind of God would tell you, wives with unsaved husbands, that you must still submit. He says clearly in it. He says, if any obey not the word, they also may without, amen, without the word be won by your behavior, by your conversation. Paul tells us that your conduct is crucial, amen, praise God, to build the faith, or the faith. He, Paul spoke of it also, amen. He says, if he desired to stay, let him stay. If he wants to remain, the word says, let him remain. So you trying to push him out is not the answer. Lord, help me. Amen. Amen. Somebody, amen. Amen. Praise God. It's here that we seek the wisdom of God. I'm talking to those that might have an unsaved in the midst, whether wife or husband. You see, amen, the wisdom of God to testify of the love of God to him or her that is around you. Amen. Many unsaved husbands have not rejected God, but surely they have rejected your God. Are you with me, somebody? They have not. They love God. They know about God and they want to serve God. But when they consider, when they look at the fruit of your spirit, they don't want to serve God. Amen. So they have rejected your God. Are you with me, somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. They don't want to associate. Amen. Because of your attitude or your conduct does not testify of the wholeness of Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody bless God in the house. Somebody praise God. Amen. And if we are going to bring them to the realization of who Christ is, our testimony, our testimony should be one, amen, praise God, that would elevate and expand the person's spirit, your mate's spirit, until you find him at the side of your bed praying with you. Amen. Amen. That he might be sanctified through your behavior, sanctified through the word of God, sanctified by your conduct. You can't be shouting at that man and misbehaving and embarrassing him in the front of anybody. Somebody not hearing me. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost, hear. Amen. He knows a hypocrite when he sees one. Amen. But God, 
You might think that he doesn't understand. He knows what God requires of you. He knows what God requires of himself. They know, they know, even though they are unsaved. But unless we exemplify Christ in our walk, in our talk, in our behavior, amen, we can't be believers. And we are the first one to, amen, praise God, to keep the malice. We are the first one, amen, to slam the door. We are the first one to separate with our anger. We are the first one to misbehave. Amen, he doesn't testify. Of who Christ is. The spirit of God admonish you. To seek God. And to work with your mate. Whether male or female. By submitting and reverencing. And loving and honor him. Even if he's unsaved. Whew. The spirit of God does not condone abuse in any marriage. Whether male or female, whether physical or mental or psychological, God is not saying that anyone should submit, amen, praise God, to abuse. But my God, I feel when one has the Spirit of God on the inside, they can change things. What's the sense that we decree and declare that we can call those things that aren't? As though they were, but those that are in our household, we can't call it into being. We cannot allow our spirit to change the current that is presently in the house. When it gets tough, amen, the prayer gets tougher. When it gets hard, the fasting gets longer. But we're going to stay in the midst until we see a change. Somebody not hearing me. We're going to stay down there until we see a change. God is depending on you to bring that soul in. God is depending on you to bring that soul to your knee. But unless we submit. Hallelujah. I know you know I wasn't going there. Amen. As wives, our dependency is on God. And whether saved or unsaved, we are dependent on God and we ought to be obedient to his word. Amen. Praise God. The relationship can work. Marriage can work. If God, if God knew it could not work, he would not institute it. There are too many people that have been married 50 and 60 years because they love each other and know God. Whether in Christ or out of Christ, amen, praise God. And we that are in Christ, we are harping and harping. Some of us don't even want our husband to get married, to get saved. Because we like the fact that there's some liberty you have because he's unsaved. Oh, somebody not hearing me. But my God, amen, God will hold you accountable. Amen, if your actions, amen, don't help this man or help this woman to come home. Amen. Somebody give God a praise in the house. So Peter called us how to use our conversation to win the unsaved. The Bible says, amen. Peter says in his word, he says, while they behold your chaste, pure conversation coupled with fear. If you have the wisdom of God, the fear of God should be upon you. And if the fear of God is upon you, even your husband, since there are more unsaved husbands, amen, than unsaved wives, amen. Your husband or your wife should be, amen, frightful about how they approach you because of the spirit of God that is in you. The Bible says, let no filthy communication come out of your mouth. Amen. Praise God. Do all things without murmuring or disputing. To both the husband and the wife, the communication is the greatest breakdown in the marriage. Amen. Some of our believers, some of the words, no slipping of words. Words should not slip out of your mouth. Only things that reside can slip out. Unless you kept it inside. And it slips out, amen, because it has resided inside of you and if it's something inside of you is not pure and clean the Bible says think of the things that are true the things that are lovely the things that are pure the things that are honest the things that are of good report amen praise God hallelujah if there be any virtue if there be any praise 
think on those things. And so in the word of God, the word that should be coming out of our mouth should be pure and clean. But some of us know, amen, praise God. Behind closed door, the words that are coming out, the words that are being spoken to our unsaved. My God, they wonder how you get dressed. Amen, a few hours after. And say you're going to church. Somebody help me here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me take my time. Let your speech be seasoned with salt. That we may know how you ought to answer every man. Colossians 4 and 6. Our communication can build or destroy our relationship. Amen. The psalmist says, let my sentence come forth from thy presence. The words that we speak should be ordained by God. We should think before we speak. Get the mind of God. Know when you're in a warfare, there's some warfare that you don't have to do nothing but be still. For marriages work to work, to stay afloat. We must guard our heart. For in it is all diligence. Amen. It from it flows the amen. All diligence flows the issues of life. Amen. Whether our husband or wife is saved or unsaved. We are believers must put a watch at the door of our mouth. Hallelujah. Whether you're courting or not. Everything is not expedient to speak. Don't be so quick on the draw. Some of our women, because we know we are quick thinkers, we can outspeak and outspoke everybody else. But my God, we need to put a watch at the door of our mouth. Sometimes we shut up our husband's spirit that what God has put in them can't come out because we have shut them down so often that they don't know when to speak anymore. Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. James tells us the tongue is a little member. Amen. It boasts us great. The tongue can kindle a fire. It is a fire. And some men have kindled many fire in their home unnecessarily. Broken the hearts of their wives and tear their wives down. And even when the wives are crying or hurt or wounded... They will get up and they will walk away because that shows that I am the man. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It shows that you're the leader because you believe that crushing means leadership. Because you believe, amen, praise God, that you're the ruler. And ruler put everything under submission and under subjection. But that's not the word of God. Amen. Some of the husbands, amen, sometimes you know that you've broken her in two. You know that you have deliberately hurt her spirit. And my God, because of your pride, you won't go and heal your marriage. Whew. Let's talk about the ones that will never say I'm sorry. No matter what happens, they will never say I'm sorry. They will give you every gift under the world. They will show you with gifts. But pride won't allow them to open their mouth and say, Honey, my wife, I am sorry for my conduct. Because they're never sorry for what they've done. They always justify it. Amen. And continue. But it's a time if we want our marriages to work. Be quick on the draw to say, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have moved in that direction. Don't be afraid, husbands, to say, Honey, you're so right. Hallelujah. Am I by myself today? Amen. The tongue. No man can tame, James says. It is unruly and it's full of deadly poison. Remember last week we talked about that the body was one. How can you poison your entire body? 
How can you deliberately poison your entire body by using the tongue? By you know, every one of us know what hurts. Amen. It was Job says, you're cutting me in pieces with your words. You're tearing me apart with your words. You're using your words to cut me to pieces. And some of us in our marriages, we cut each other to pieces. And there is no regret. There is no apology. We slam the phone down. Turn the phone off. Walk away. Slam the door. Leave the house. And no regrets. Woo. Is somebody in the house? So in order for us to maintain a marriage of peace, we got to hold our tongue and use wisdom. Amen. You see, the wife can be a talker. Sometimes it's the husband. And sometimes the, 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 the thing can get into such a place that in the middle of the night, one might want to speak to communicate. Because they couldn't find it necessary. They couldn't find a chance. I remember earlier in my marriage, amen, praise God. I always waited until my husband get on the highway. At full speed. On the highway. To talk. Because I figure he can't stop. Hallelujah. I, I, I mean, can I be honest? I'm waiting. I know I ain't trying it at home, but I need to say something. And I know if I start it at home, I won't get to say what I need to say. So I would act nice, really nice, get in the car, and wait until he's on 95, the turnpike. And when he's on the turnpike, I said, but honey, what about this? I know he ain't going to answer me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But uh, that was my chance. It shouldn't be so. And it's not so anymore. But years ago, I had to wait for the turnpike. It was my place to say what I want to say. And so some of us are not giving our mates a chance to truly express themselves. Amen. It's how my husband taught me this. He said, that's how I feel. Whether you agree or not. Sometimes it's how they feel. You got to listen how they feel. Whether you agree or not. Woo. Hallelujah. But that's your heart. Let her tell you her heart. Leave all of the battles to the Lord. Trust the Bible says in the Lord. and Lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways. The Bible says commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he will bring those things that seem to not working to pass. So do this and your spouse will be Chase by your pure or pure conversation coupled with fear. Amen. So even whether they're saved or not, I, I'm here to tell you that, amen, let us change the way we approach each other in conversation. Don't stay across the street and shout him out. Don't stay across the street and shout her out. One of the things I know that men don't like to be shout down or to be embarrassed. Amen. Don't embarrass your husband. Let him sit in the gate and look good. Don't tear him down in front of others. Amen. Not even in front of your family because you want your family to know your boss. Amen. Husbands, don't tear your wives down among the family. Amen. Praise God. But amen. Treat her as she's a tender flower. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's get back to the word. Hallelujah. 
Now Peter begins and he moved forward into somewhat what we call deep waters. He clearly tells us that the beauty of the woman is not the outward adorning, but it's the hidden heart. We need to just stop looking at the outward beauty now. Because behind some woman, there's some beautiful woman. Amen, praise God. But you see, some of us want something to look good on the side of our arm. And when you take her home, amen, the leg don't belong to her. The hip don't belong to her. The hair don't belong to her. The teeth don't belong to her. Amen. When you take her home, amen, you are so mad with what you take home. But when you saw her in the first place, you said, my God, she looks good. And you're willing to take her home. But when she opens her mouth, there's no beauty inside of her. So it's not the adorning. It's not, it's not the looks. Look at the heart. Young men find a woman that is seeking God. Not one that is fleshly and full of self. Young women look for a man that is looking for God. That is in the presence of God. Keep one eye open when you're praying and look if he's praying. Keep one eye open and look if he's praising. When you're busy praying, open one eye and give God a one eye thing. And check it out and see if there's a prayer life going on. Make a calendar and watch if he's coming to church. Look how often he comes to church. See if he comes to church on time. See if he's on business for the king. Not because he's cute and looking good. That don't make him a good husband. But look for one that has a prayer life. That is on their knees before God. When they speak the things of God. Here comes the oracle of God. Look for a woman that knows God. That says, let me seek God concerning this. Don't look for a happy woman. That is happy that you spoke to her. Don't look for a woman, praise God, that just want a man. Look for a woman that wants a man of God. A woman that wants to give amen all the glory to God. Look for a woman that loves God. Somebody give God a praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. Man, when she pass you, look if she's twitching for you to see. Amen. You want somebody that is walking holy and acceptable before God. Not someone that is trying to lure you in. Listen to the conversation. Look how often she calls you. Stay away from those. Those are only looking at man. They're not looking at man of God. Hallelujah. Glory. Somebody shout glory. She might be cute. He might be handsome. But they ain't got nothing on the inside. You want a mic? <laughs> Amen. Nothing on the inside. When you take her home, you want to wrap them and send them back. But you got to live with them. Hallelujah. Listen to the vain conversation. Listen to, be a good listener. When, when, when you're seeking, Lord knows, help me, Holy Ghost. When you're, when, when, when you're, when, when you're choosing, forget about all the hair thing and the nail thing and the muscle thing. But look for somebody that love God. I, I'm talking about choosing. Do the one eye thing. Tell somebody I'm busy doing the one eye thing. Amen. Put your hand over your face like you're deep in prayer. And open your finger. And I spy it out. Check it out. See if it's looking at its nails during prayer. Putting lipstick on. Checking the hair how it flows. While everybody's praying. When you see that you walk away from it. 
that is all flesh you want to marry. Leave the flesh alone. But look for somebody. When time for prayer, they're an urgency for God. When it's time for devotion, they're singing the song of God. Not because they have a voice, but they enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with prayer. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Beauty but an empty vessel. Empty, empty vessel. Amen. The woman must be clothed in strength and honor. That's what Proverbs says, 31. Strength and honor are her clothing. She bears wisdom and out of her mouth come kindness. Amen. So that's the beauty of the woman. And so for the man, that's the beauty of the man. Check that joker's credit. Yeah. Hallelujah. If he wants a wife, he should know how to deal with the finance. Somebody not going to love me now. Amen. Praise God. Ask him some straight questions about things in his life. Amen. Praise God. Check him and ask him. Have you ever had STD? Ask him the question. Check him out well. Don't be so quick to run and take him. Oh. Hallelujah. Were you in the rum bar? I'm talking, checking him out. What have you been doing before me? Check him out. Don't be afraid to ask, do you have a green card? Because you might be the next stooge online. Don't be afraid to ask them. If you see them hinting, if you have citizenship, early in the talk, leave it alone. Because somebody's seeking a green card. Amen. This is deep. Very deep. Deep, deep. Amen. Amen. But sometimes you start talking to somebody and they start hinting. If they ask you when last you've been back to your homeland, be careful how you answer. Have you been back to Jamaica anytime soon? A recent? And you say no. They say why? Because they want to know if they can get their green card through you, but you ain't got it, so they're going to move on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the beauty of the woman is her relationship with God and her husband. King um, Le Le Muel, amen, ask a question. Who can find a virtuous woman? The heart of her husband will not only trust her, but she will do him good. I'm talking about the outside adorning. I'm getting ready to close. Amen. I won't finish this. But amen. Praise God. The outward adorning. And she will do him good all the days of her life. Amen. She, the husband then will have no need for spoil. And for those husbands that think that marriage and infidelity works hand in hand. That you can have your wife and because she's saved and she's not going to cheat on you, you decide to go cheat on her. That infidelity. Amen. Praise God. In, that's not of God. Don't be fooled by that. And wives, don't be fooled by, by a husband acting like you're the only one, but he's disappearing. If a husband can't take you where he's going, something is wrong. If a husband can't take you where he's going, something is wrong. It's not his office, amen. He's not going to the office and it's a Saturday and he's, and he's going out. Can I come? No, not today. Where are you going? Oh, I'm just running up the road. I'll come with you up the road. I can't go. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Amen. When, when, when you have built a relationship, amen, it shouldn't be that your phone has a, a password that the other don't know. Your email should not be a password that the other don't know. I know my husband's password to his phone, but I don't need it. I don't have to use it. Are you with me, somebody? 
I don't have to wait. When a wife have to wait until her husband hope that her husband leave his phone by accident, something is wrong. When the husband carry the phone everywhere he goes, whether in the toilet, the bathroom, the kitchen, in the shower. Some of them have invested in waterproof phone. Amen. There's infidelity in the marriage. Something is wrong. When you declare, I'm talking about those that decree and declare salvation. Is, can I talk to you? If you decree and declare salvation, you're one. My phone is your phone. Are you with me, somebody? My computer is your computer. Are you with me, somebody? But the hide and go seek is infidelity somewhere. We still at the beauty, right? I'm talking about the beautiful maid. There should be trust in the marriage. I should be able to trust you and you trust me. I shouldn't be sneaking up to the house, tippy toe, and putting in the key and turning it slowly. Boom! Infidelity. Not when you decree and declare that you're saved. When you're saved, you don't go and leave the other. I, I, I thank God for this man because it was like a twin thing. You see us here, you see us there. We're up to work, down to work. Over here, down here. People come in here, they say, I never see one without the other. It should be a, a, a twin, two together. You can't go to his job, I agree, and he can't come to yours. But after work, it should be two of you. Two of you to the church house. Two of you on your knees. Two of you praying together. Are you with me? Sure, somebody could be going to gym here and gym there if it's not the same gym. But it should be the same gym. Because you know you're gymming. And some things passing by is gymming too. Amen. Amen. So our dress code is spiritual and should testify God and also bring in submission to our husband, save or unsaved. Now we look at one more verse and then I'll stop there. Let the, amen, amen. And after this manner in the old times, the holy woman also trusted in God, adorned themselves. Okay, we did that. Six. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham and called him Lord, whose daughters we are, as long as we do well, we are not afraid. And are not afraid with amazement. Amen. The Bible says that Sarah called her husband Lord. And sometimes... We run away with that piece. It's like a runaway train. In many expositories and from preacher, preachers or teachers, it make it look as if slow, Sarah was lower and the husband was higher. And, and, and so um, her submission was so much so that you know how you bow and say, my Lord, yes, my Lord. So sometimes it's, that's, it's depicted that way at but this morning, I, I, I want to, this afternoon, I want to discuss that a little bit. Amen. Because it is not that he, Abraham, is God over her, our superior. Amen. The woman has her rightful place in, the, in society and in the home. Amen. The woman is strong. I know we, got, we, we won't get to the vessel, the weaker vessel today. But the woman is strong. I know I'm a strong black woman. Amen. And I know that many of my sisters are strong black women. So, I want to talk, uh, I, I don't know if I'll get there, but I, I just want to, I want to deal with the, the Lord because sometimes we, we, we hold to that and we make the woman look as if she is the rug under our feet, under the feet. And, and because Sarah called him Lord, it just seemed automatically to some people that the woman really don't have a place. Amen. Amen. And so... When we look at the word Lord, and I look at the word, the, the L-O-R-D in caps, amen, it's a covenant name that means Yahweh. 
all right? So capital L-O-R-D is Lord Yahweh, amen. Lord Yahweh, it's, it's God's covenant name, amen. Praise God, hallelujah, for us. It's a name that was so, so reverent that they never even spoke it. It had no vowels in it, amen, praise God, only consonants, and it was Yahweh. But it was so covenant that they didn't speak it. Then we look at the word Lord with capital L, small O-R-D, and it's Adonai. And the capital L, and Bishop spoke about it this morning, amen, the capital L, when, when Saul was on his way to Damascus, uh, and he had an encounter with God, he says, Lord, he immediately recognized him, and how we know that he recognized God was that he used the word capital L-O-R-D, which is Adonai, amen, praise God. And, and the word Lord Adonai, amen, it goes to Christ, amen. Once in the Bible, and the Jehovah's Witness break out all the time, because, amen, in their translation, they put back, amen, praise God, Lord. And we, amen, change it somewhat and call him Lord, L-O-R-D, not change it, but we, we keep it in the, in, 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 in the Greek, and they keep it, amen, in the Hebrew, not understanding that it's the same. And so here we are at this moment, this junction, that Lord, L, capital L-O-R-D, belongs to a deity when we, we worship Christ. We say, Lord God, Lord Almighty, Lord Eternal. And so we worship him. But when we come to the small Lord, L-O-R-D, which is all small caps, when we get to the all small caps, then we are talking man to man. Okay, so we see that, amen, praise God, amen, that Moses' brother, amen, hallelujah, glory to God, Aaron, called him Lord. Aaron was high priest, but he called his brother Lord. Jacob, on his return to Esau, called Esau Lord. I'm talking about small letter O-R-D. Are you with me, somebody? Is there anybody here yet? Oh, glory to God, hallelujah. David called King Saul Lord. Everybody get silent now. Amen. Ahaziel, which was king of Syria, he was king, but hallelujah, he called Elisha Lord. Amen. 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 So Lord is used in this manner does not indicate nor imply superiority on the part of the one being addressed, nor inferiority of the one who is speaking. Are you with me? So she approaches her husband and calls him Lord. It doesn't mean that she's a lesser person. Oh, Lord. Thank you, somebody. Amen. As a matter of fact, Sarah... When we look at the, 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 the when we look at the Hebrew mean, it means she's prince or princess. Amen. So she by herself has royalty. She by herself has superiority. Amen. So her name means that she's princess. Amen. Hallelujah. So this woman Sarah had full authority. I just want you to understand that she just honored her husband. But not for somebody to look at it and think that she's less of a person. And that wives should walk around, amen, if they desire to call their husband Lord, it's up to them. And if the husband want to call them Lord, yes, it's up to them. But my God, I just want to make clear, amen, according to the scripture, that she's no less of a person. As a matter of fact, Sarah, amen, praise God, hallelujah, amen, had wisdom, and my God spoke to the man of God, her husband, and she said, send Agar away, they send the bond woman out, get her from out of my son, because in my son Isaac, amen, praise God, is the promise call, send this blonde woman away. And when she sent the bond woman away and Abraham, amen, praise God, did not want to yield to the word. The first time, amen, praise God, the Bible says that Agar left, amen, the presence and left, amen, and went into the wilderness. Amen, praise God. And there she encountered, amen, the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord said, go back and submit. 
Go back and submit to your mistress. The word mistress there mean master or Lord. Go back and submit to your Lord, which is, was Agar. That's what a God told her. Amen. Hallelujah. Told Agar to do. Go back to Sarah and submit. Are you with me, somebody? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I want to clear that up. Go back and submit. The second time around, Sarah said, send a woman away. Abraham had a, had a, had a, had a hurt. He was hurt concerning that statement. He went to God. And God says, obey your wife. Send her away. So she's not inferior. The woman is not inferior, but superior. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. Somebody give God a praise. <laughs> Amen. Somebody give God a praise. Let me also just add this as we close. The weaker vessel. Because the woman's frame is different from the man's frame, thank God. Because we are made to bear and to bring forth children. But the weaker vessel does not mean her thought pattern is weak. Or she's unable to think, unable to make decisions, or she's unable to do. In, in the Greek or Romans time, about BC 300s, during this time, women in the pagan world was known as slaves. And they were treated like, the wives were treated like slave or like children or property of their husband. It is not so now. When Peter spoke, he spoke to them. Saying, just like we say about the Corinthians church, if the Corinthians women cut off their hair, then church don't cut your hair. He said, listen, don't treat, your, the wives are the weaker vessel, but you are not. If you look clearly, he says you are not, but giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel because of what was going on around. It's not that she was weak and feeble in mind. And he says, being heir together. I'm just trying to close. Being heir, heir means that ownership of property. Amen, praise God. And you can only be an heir when somebody dies. And we know that Jesus Christ died. Amen, praise God. But we are joint heir. Husbands and wives are joint heir together. Amen, praise God. In the kingdom of God. Everyone standing. Hallelujah. Everyone standing. Hallelujah. He's called to honor the husband to also honor the wife. It is not only the wife to honor the husband, but dwell with her according to knowledge, with the knowledge of knowing how the outside world treats women. Even now, there is an inferior inferiority piece. Like we know that women and men will do the same job, but women are paid less. That's what they're talking about. Women are paid less. Women are treated less. Amen. We have grown in a society where, where a woman wants, when a woman does something, amen, praise God, exceptional that she gets even an account for it. But there was a time that women were not noticed of doing anything. Amen. No matter what she did, it was not counted. Amen. But in the church of God as believers, we're equal together, working together. And I say to people in counseling, when I see a husband and wife together, I say to them that the husband has the authority. And no matter how you do it or cut it, that doesn't change. If there is a, I, and I use this all the time, I say if there's a wall to be painted blue, if the wife wants to paint it blue, and the husband says, no, I want it green, and you're going back and forth, back and forth, the husband um, la has the last say. Amen. So there, there is that respect to the husband as well as he listens to his wife. Because wisdom is the wife you marry should have wisdom. And when she has wisdom, she will hear from God too to help to guide you. And I said that that's the help me part. 
that, 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 that guidance be, the help me is not the work. Because sometimes we, we put everything in the natural. Oh, the help me, the, you're supposed to help me meet the bills. You're supposed to help me meet the this. You're supposed to help me. No. The help meet is to help you also to make decisions. She, 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 she's supposed to help you to build you, to, to make decisions. Your, your desire, wives, your desire to your husband is to want him to look good. To want him to be strong and, and want him to favorable. And, and, and that's how the, wife, the husband should approach his wife. He should want her to excel. Amen. Amen. Excel. And so, so if God, always remember, husbands, that your wife can hear from God. If you have a praying wife, a wife that sits before the presence of God, and she opens her mouth, listen. I was saying something to my husband the other day, and he says, oh, I'm not even worried because I, I, I live with a prophet. I said, what do you mean? I said, if something going to happen, God go tell you, you go tell me. So even though he was being jovial about it, that means he's telling me that I listen to some of the things that God up to tell you too. He doesn't just shut it off. Herod confronted with Jesus. His wife says, listen, I have none to do with that holy man. You leave that man alone. I had a dream last night. He could have shushed her, but God spoke to her because of her spirit was able to hear from him. He gave her a dream. Leave that holy man alone. So the woman can hear. The woman can hear from God and she has the ability to help you build. Everybody's not like my marriage. I am always running, pulling, pushing. My husband is pulling back. My husband says something to me. I say he's the birther. He gives me. Amen. He's the giver. He plants something in my spirit. I run with it and I birth it. Amen. He plants it, I burnt it just like a seed. If it's, it's his burnable, some things are not burnable. I tell him, I said, no, that one is a rough one. I'll try, but I don't think so. Amen. Amen. Some husbands have what we call an itchy, like, you know, the buyer's itch. I want it done right now. I want to get this right now. I want to do it right now. Sometimes it's the wife, one pulling the other back. Don't look at the pullback as hate or a fight against the vision. Look at the pullback as a time because if I want something, and anybody ever wants something right away, and you didn't just access it, and after a while it leave your spirit, it's just gone. You don't want that $50 shoes anymore or that $500 piece of furniture or that $10,000 piece. It's gone from your spirit. That means at the time you had an itch to do it. It would have bring you sorrows, but after a while it leaves. So sometimes a pulling back is good. So if one has a tendency to pull the other back for a little bit, it doesn't mean that you're fighting me. You're fighting against me. You won't let me prosper. You're stopping me from going forward. No. It means that let's think it out. Honey, are you saying let's think it out? Let's pray it out. Let's seek the mind of God and let's work with it. Marriage can work. Oh, yes, it can. It is a beautiful thing. Put some of these things in practice if you can. Amen. Get the tape. Put some of it in practice if you can. It goes for all of us. It's not here to discredit anyone or to put anyone on the feet. But it's here to build you and build your relationship. Wives again, I say this, respect your husbands. Treat them with honor and reverence. Husbands, honor your wives. Amen. If husbands, support your families. The Bible says if a man don't work, he shouldn't eat. Don't look for your wife to support you. Support her and the family. That's where I think there's a great breakdown in leadership role. 
Because the, hus the wife see herself as the breadwinner. Make it so that you are a contributor to your home. Last week I said it doesn't matter if it's a dollar, but be a contributor. Never allow your wife, if you're going to do what you need to do, don't allow your wife to be the breadwinner, come home and do the work, and then you tell her what to do. It's not going to work. Be a contributor. Get a job. Make a job. Work a job. Do something to support her. Amen. Take care of your family. Last, take your family on vacation. Take, wives, take time out for your husband. Husband, take time out for your wives. Plan vacations together. Go away with your mate. Walk with your mate. Continue to do date nights. Go away, have a date, make it work. Plan a date night. Oh, I know he loves me, she loves me. We've been married forever. Yeah, but there is no spark, spark left. Do your date nights. Do your beautiful dinner. Still buy a nice gift when you can. Invest in the marriage. It can work. Save something in the side to take him to Burger King or her to Burger King, wherever. Wherever, do something. Still look nice. Still express yourself beautifully. Work towards it. God bless you all. Amen. This is a message that 